everyone. Welcome to another episode of Psy Talk. Today I have Connell and Rhonda Hollins. <laughs> they are content creators. I met them at PodFest and I'm very excited to have them on the show today. So welcome, Rhonda, Connell. Thank you, Keisha. Thank you for having us. You know, Thank I'm, you. I, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. It's going to be a great show. So I brought them on the show to talk about marriage. And uh, the reason why is because when I met them, we started talking and I discovered that they have this movement going on. It's called Me To We Ministries. And I'm going to defer to you guys to tell us what this is all about, what you're doing, how it got started. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, absolutely. So, you know, we, again, our Me To We Talk podcast, but Me To We Ministries is our baby. That was our baby love. And that's yes. how this whole thing, you know, was birthed. Uh, am I saying that correctly, honey? I don't you know. You are. You are. Um, so we actually started taking a class, a prep for marriage class at first. Mm -hmm. And we just, after we took the class, we felt like it's more that we could be doing for the ministry. Right. And so we asked ourselves, what, what could that be? Mm -hmm. So before we decided to really full heartedly jump right in, we said, well, let's take the class again. Yeah. So we ended up taking the class actually at least five more times mm -hmm. before we decided to really get our feet wet. Yeah. And, you know, let's be a little even more direct. I think my husband heard the call to do this and I was brought in kicking and screaming. <laughs> and I just want to be honest because it was very difficult for me to want to do it because my parents were in ministry and they taught at our very same church. They taught family and life, you know, meaning like they did the family course. Right. And I found that they were always teaching the course and they were helping other people all the time. And I just felt as though we needed time together as a family. And so it was very difficult for me to want to do it. And so when my husband had this call where he kept hearing we should do this class, I was like, where did you hear that? I didn't hear that. <laughs> you know, I didn't hear it at all. And, um, you know, he, he brought me around and the reason why he brought me around is after we had taken the class those five times I started to fall in love with love you know like I loved how we were growing and developing and we felt that there were questions that weren't being answered you know to a lot of other you know couples we right. felt like you know especially in a church setting they would talk about why you shouldn't have sex before marriage, but they didn't tell you what was the ramifications if you do. The spiritual, the natural, and just overall what needs to happen. And so we want, went about creating this course to answer those unanswered questions, to have difficult conversations and train others to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Right. And so what happened was from the class... A lot of the kids started telling us, well, young adults started telling us, man, this is some great information and this shouldn't just be for us. Like right. other people really need to hear this. And so we decided, you know, how can we take it out of these four walls? And from there, the podcast was born. Mm -hmm. It was born from that. So now we've been on this journey. Um, we are about, you know, a little. we're going into our second season, which we're really happy about. But we find that, you know, having these conversations are really building and developing relationships, but not just any type of relationships. They're, right. they're long lasting. And we always tell people we've seen a lot of relationships and marriages survive, but we don't want them to survive. We want them to thrive. Yes. And there's a difference. You know, we want you to be passionate about the one that you're with. And yeah, you're going to have some problems. You're going to have some fights along the way. And we don't call them fights. We call them heated fellowship. Correct. But, you know, those heated fellowships along the way actually make you better, okay. grow you. Nice. I love it. That is amazing. I love how you guys started out doing something that you're passionate about, and then it just morphed into something bigger than you probably even thought that it would. Yeah. So that's what I love about following your passion and doing what you're called to do. Because when you do, things just, you know fall into place as they should. So the first thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is how do you know when it's right? I feel like a lot of people get into relationships and some people want to get married because it's like a task on their list of things to do before they turn, you know, X age or whatever. How do you really know that marriage is the next step in a relationship? What do you guys think? So I'll, if it's okay, I'll, I'll go first. Yeah. Okay. Sure. So in my opinion, 
I truly wholeheartedly believe that the guy pretty much knows from Jump Street. Mm -hmm. Because you know what you're going to allow this relationship to be. You know where you're going to allow it to go. So if you truly see yourself with this woman for the long long haul, it shouldn't take three, five, seven years to literally get married. Mm -hmm. Not that it should take six months either, but the conversation can really be had early on. Because you already know. And plus, if you know, you've prayed about it. And right off the top, the Bible already says when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing in favor from the Lord. So the man obviously knows first, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I truly believe that the guy knows, like, from Jump Street. Like, and I, I, I don't necessarily believe in love at first sight. But I do believe that when you know love, you see love. You recognize what real love is compared to all the other times you may have said you love the person before. You can tell the difference. Yeah. I would say, you know, to answer your question again, when you said, you know, how do you know? Is that the right phrasing, Keisha? Am I correct with that? Yeah. Okay. So how do you know? A lot of times the way you know is through discovery. And, you know, it comes down to asking a lot of questions. Yes. You know, if you're just going off of the way someone looks or what they drive or, or what type of occupation they have, literally that's not enough because, you know, even in today's economy, it's letting you know those things don't always last. But Say that. what does last is, do you know this person enough, even in their weakest moments, in order for you to move forward with them? Because that's how a relationship is defined. It's when things, when the chips are down, are you going to be there for me? Are you going to be there for that person? Right. Are you able to support them emotionally not just financially. That's Correct. great. That's a perk to it all. So I would say you have to ask a lot of questions like wh- wh- what's their familial background? You know, what are some issues why they have gotten into relationships before or why they've broken up a lot before? You know, you need to get dig in and, and not accept just a simple response and because you like the packaging. Yes, that is so true. And it's so funny. I love that Connell said what he said, because that is like a segue into my next question, (laughs) which is how long should you wait? And I say that because a lot of women are in relationships with men where they have children, they've been living together for many years, they live as a married couple, but for whatever reason, the man does not want to take that next step. I myself was with my husband for seven years before we actually got married. And let me tell you, I was about to leave. Okay, so he's lucky that, (laughs) that, you know, the Lord spoke to him or whatever happened. (laughs) And we made that official. But a lot of times it's hard to walk away from a relationship that seems you know, like, fine, like, he's a provider, he's taking care of his kids, he loves me, he's doing everything right, but he doesn't want to get married. So, Connell, go ahead, what you got to say? <laughs> just put me on the spot. <laughs> Unfortunately, just, just being super transparent, you expect what you get, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, if you, you allow the situation to carry on for as long as you choose to let it carry on, then you got to expect the results you're going to get. Mm-hmm. So therefore, so we always say like your husband, for instance, Keisha, he recognized you were a good thing. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. just, maybe it wasn't the right time. It's all about timing as well, mm-hmm. but not for, not you, but in some cases, a lot of guys tend to put a good woman on a layaway plan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like they know they have something good, but so for some reason they won't just step up and do what they know is the next thing. They won't go ahead and just make it official. Yeah. yeah. In some cases, it's actually because of where they come from. Because like my wife was just saying, none of us, for the first time people get, getting married, none of us know how to be married. So all we can recognize is what we saw as a child. So if we saw our parents' marriage as dysfunctional, maybe we don't want that. So maybe marriage is like a taboo term to us because of what we saw as a child. Yeah, or maybe they were never married in the first place. Maybe there right. was maybe there was a situation where they were coexisting and they seemed to be working out fine. So we're just completing the cycle. Yeah, and you know, and it's just a follow through of what they've known until you show them something different. If I may jump in no, on there, come on. until you show them something different, then they're not going to move on it, you know, and do it. It's and there are some people that just really need to take their time, but there are some people that need a swift kick in the butt. I mean, right. they need to wake up and look at what's in front of them. 
but I am a firm believer that you don't let someone know that you're a good thing, you know, and I think that's what happens, you know, especially with a lot of women that we work with and we see, they go, hey, I've put a lot of time in, you know, we have children together and things along that, hey, we're sharing finances. Those are all not reasons to get married. They're just not. I mean, if you base it upon that, then it's literally you have a roommate, you don't have a marriage. And so what we always tell everyone is this, is that you need to make sure that you have a standard in place. Like if you let them know and there's a firm standard that, hey, this is the threshold. I'm not going to go past this standpoint. You know, I'm not going to go any further than this moment. I need to know where we stand. Right. There's nothing wrong with asking those questions. And if you feel concerned or scared to ask those questions, I would ask you to reevaluate that relationship because you should not be afraid to find out where you stand, especially if you have children, Correct. especially if you are intimate with one another. So being having sex with someone is far more intimate than asking a question if we should be intimate and stay together. Like it's just far more. So, you know, you don't want to be put in a situation where, you know, you flip the standard and allow the status quo, like you allow them to say, Hey, this is what we are. And I'm not saying that to be mean. Uh, If you have a child together, that's great. Your child is a gift. That's what maybe you should do. Sometimes people who have children together should not be married. There was something that they created something special together. Right. And sometimes they maybe should just leave it right there. I just don't think that that's a prerequisite to get married or to hear that statement. They made you an honest woman. Mm, wow, that's really good, Rhonda. Uh, I never looked at it like that, but it's true. I mean, I always feel like having a baby to me is more of a commitment than getting married. And I feel like that because I, I say a child, that's a lifelong commitment. You know, you guys have to be a part of this person's life forever, whether you and then when the kid is young, you have to co parent, you have to do all these things. But a marriage, if it's not working out, you can like get a divorce, you know, cut your losses and peace out. But a baby, you know, you you can't cut your losses there. That's a human being that you brought into the world. And I don't necessarily think that just because you have a baby that you should get married either, because I totally agree with you that sometimes you just have a baby with someone and that's it. You leave it there. Like, mm -mm. so that's a great perspective. I'm glad that you said that. You know, Keisha, it was something you just said there. I do think that the way that we look at it, see, we value love and marriage so much that actually we want you to look at it and think of it as this it is like like you can't break it up it isn't like you shouldn't shouldn't be able to find that way of escape Mm -hmm. it should be you guys are stuck in this not because you you are stuck by contracts and all these other things and bills you're stuck because you want to be stuck you want to be together and so we're going to do everything possible for us not to break up and that is why we have a 98% success rate with those who have gone through our classes that have taken our courses and the, those that we've officiated their weddings for, we are very specific. Like, you can't bail out. The, you know, after this point, even when we marry couples and we, we officiate, we'll say to them often, you understand that there are no exchanges. There are no refunds. There is no warranty. If it gets broke, you better fix it. And we let them know that because it is our job, in a sense, to mandate that they fight for what right. they have. They have to fight for love. They have to be held accountable for the commitment that they're making on that day. Yeah. Because this isn't just the wedding day like the wedding day is beautiful is grand Mm -hmm. but we're not just celebrating a wedding day we're celebrating a marriage and what's going to be for the long haul right and and part of that is when you're going to get married do you have the right understanding of what marriage is first like if do you believe it's okay to walk away if you believe starting off at the bed we're not walking away from this we're going to push through this no matter what we're going to fix this and then we're going to have some deal breakers in place so that you don't cross these boundaries so we don't be put in the position where we have to walk away correct yeah that's true i mean when we got married we went to the justice of the peace and i wanted to have a wedding but my husband said do you want a wedding or a marriage? So I was like, um, I'll, I'll just go ahead and take that marriage. <laughs> so go to the justice of the peace. Right. 
<laughs> right? And 10 years later, we, you know, just celebrated, we had like a renewal where we actually had like a little, you know, personal wedding. So I'm Yay. glad that he did it like that. So, you know, Man, there you go. <laughs> and that's the good thing about it. There's no wrong or right way to do it because your marriage isn't going to be your parents' marriage or anybody else you might know. Mm -mm. So don't try to fall into that box or try to be like the Joneses. Do what works for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So <laughs> let's talk about communication. I feel like communication is a major part of a good marriage is learning how to communicate with each other. Um, and I think that that's where a lot of couples break down. So give us some pointers on communicating effectively with your spouse. Well, you first off, you are correct. Communication is the number one reason that couples tend to break up because there is some miscommunication going on. Mm -hmm. So we always tell people up front, you can never, ever, ever, ever over communicate right just when you think you got this thing down and you sell on easy street there's going to be a wrench thrown into it <laughs> and you got to communicate even more mm -hmm. so don't don't ever think it's done mm -hmm. you never stop learning and growing with one another and you never ever stop communicating yeah and then i would also say if you get into an argument or a fight don't waste a fight. You yes. know, like you should take something from it every single time. Each time you're recognizing your boundaries with one another. Right. And then the other thing is the you have to make sure that you are effectively not only speaking, but you're effectively listening. Correct. There's a difference. You know, you can be you can listen, but you can still not be heard, right? Right. So you want to make sure that you're actively listening, meaning you're waiting not to for that person to stop talking, but you're waiting to hear hear what it is that is on their heart in order for you to see how you can fulfill it. And, and sometimes it's okay if you guys don't meet in the middle. It's okay sometimes, but at least you got something from it. Always walk away taking something from it. And when it comes to communication. Agreed. And another thing, Keisha, that people need to be mindful of with communication mm -hmm. is tone. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. how you say something can really shut down the, shut down the conversation or a lot of conversation to continue and to actually really grow into something special because you're getting things resolved. Mm -hmm. That's a big one for me. Like I get in trouble <laughs> with that all the time. <laughs> I'm still working on it. Tone and raising my voice because my husband is very mild mannered. So when we get into discussions or what do you call it? Something fellowship. <laughs> fellowship <laughs> he did fellowship right right i get so annoyed and i start raising my voice and he's like why are you raising your voice why are you yelling when you start doing that i can't hear you you right. know mm -hmm. so that is so true and then tone like my my tone can be so like nasty sometimes and it's really something i want to work on because he's such a decent man like i feel so <laughs> bad like after you know so that's definitely a good point that you made tone. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's, it's something that you got to work on now. I'm, I'm your, your sister from another mister on that one, <laughs> like all day, you know, especially when we first got together, I had to watch my tone because if I started speaking in a certain way, right. he would immediately shut down. He would stonewall me. It was over. Yes. And to me and my personality, and I think you may be similar with this, Keisha, if he gets even more quiet it literally, it, it drives me crazy because I'm looking for a response. I'm trying to draw something out of him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then it's a transfer of power at that point because then he's winning in the argument because I've gone all type of crazy. Right. And and I had to learn to, you know, respect his silence. I yes. did. And, and that was... I would say is another part of communication, you know, like it, it, sometimes there's not a time to talk about a particular subject. Sometimes emotions need to be digested first before you can even express it. So nobody accidentally gets hurt, you know, right. and I think that is vital. And, you know, if I may say that the next thing I would say is that you got to stay on task in the argument. <laughs> right. You got to, you got to make sure you don't jump to a whole nother subject. You know, mm -hmm. like if you, you know, you're mad about this one situation yes. in that yes. moment. <laughs> Using the platform to bring up everything. Yeah. Right. Like, no, <laughs> and come on. And we've both been guilty of that one, but probably a little bit more me, but you know, you want to make sure that you stay on task. And we've, we've, 
coached other couples through it, through our experiences, and then help them to have a better experience as well. But yes, stay on task. Don't start bringing up every other annoyance you have or trying to hold it as ammo for later right? so that you can just go, bam, I got you. (laughs) And you you guys are so good at this because you flow right into my next topic. It's like we're, (laughs) you know, connected. (laughs) So (laughs) fighting fair was my next, you know, topic. And I want to say for For example, the other night, my husband, and this is so dumb, he came to bed and he (laughs) was annoyed because he couldn't find this candy that my mom left here for him. So, you know, men can't can't find anything ever. I mean, you (laughs) you guys just can't. Let's just be honest. So I was like, well, babe, I don't know where I put it. I was like, but you don't need it anyway. I mean, it's okay. And he was like, well, there you go. I'm telling me what to do again. And I'm like, wait, hold up. Who's telling you what to do? Like, I'm just saying, you know, I didn't even go into the argument. I, But that really made me mad because it was like pushing my buttons because he was annoyed because he couldn't get his little piece of candy. And now he wants to like dig at me because I said, well, I'm not going to look for it and you don't need it anyway. It's fine. Right. So... <laughs> The next day we talked about it and, you know, I said to him, that wasn't really nice because you know that I don't like when you say that because I'm not trying to control you. I'm just trying to like pacify the situation like, oh, babe, it's fine. You don't need that candy anyway. Let's just go to bed, whatever, you know, but you were annoyed because you could you didn't get what you wanted. So it's like you almost want to get me annoyed and, and you know what I mean? Pass that energy off to me. Right. So what would you guys say are some great ways to kind of checks and balances when it comes to keeping the fighting fair? But before we even say that, Keisha, I want to make a point. What you also have to take into account is... Especially with him, what what he was saying to you in this moment. Because it it goes both ways. So if it matters to him, it should also matter to you. Mm -hmm. Because if the shoe was on the other foot and you needed something, you would expect him to care about what you need. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. though, though Though it is as trivial as candy... Or Take remote it, or anything, right. yeah. So whatever, whatever, even though it may seem trivial, just let it matter to you because otherwise, the other person's not feeling heard, yeah. and then that's mm-hmm. where him shutting down or him getting into that um, heated fellowship really kind of jumps yeah. in. Because you know, to be honest, that's all the devil wants. The devil can't get in any other way, but he, the first thing he tries to do is attack our communication mm-hmm. because he know he knows that we feel like we have that on lock. Yeah. So if he sees a way. Whether it be candy or remote, then he's going to come for it. Yeah, I would say the hands down. And I think what he was looking for with you in particular was for you to jump up. He wanted your actions to match, you know, his importance level. He didn't want to. He didn't want to be pacified in that moment. And we've had that situation right. many a times. What he was looking for you to do is to get up and find out where it is okay well let's go look for it what is it that you're looking for okay we'll find it and then let them know if it's important to you it's important to me we're gonna figure it out you know Mm -hmm. um that's what it sounded like in that particular situation and like we said we've dealt with that one quite a bit so you know that's not unusual and sometimes it could be something else deep down that's also bothering him that he's looking for you to you know to in a sense kind of delve into you know like he wants you to be the investigator that you are right Mm -hmm. (laughs) and he wants you to figure it out which isn't always fair you know I I must say it's not always fair to you Um, but you're the stronger communicator it sounds like between the two of you so he's looking for you to help you know grow him in that area right and a lot of times you 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 did the right thing in my opinion you you got to make him find his words, you know, find that it's, it's a, a form of emotional intelligence, help him open up and speak about what exactly is bothering him. What was the prime reason that caused the secondary emotion that you saw, you know? Yeah. But I love how you guys are counseling me right now. Like, <laughs> can I just say like, that is a great way to look at it because I didn't even look at it from that perspective again because a lot of times we're very one-sided as human beings right so we think that we have the right answer or whatever because I wasn't trying to you know start anything but at the same time I wasn't really listening to his needs I was just like "Mm, I'm going to bed like "Mm, I don't know (laughs) nothing about no candy and (laughs) you know which wasn't right because it was something that he was invested in at that moment. So thank you for that. I receive it and I will do better. No doubt. <laughs> well, we're going to go back to your question at hand. You yes. said, 
can you ask us that one more time? Sure. Fighting fair. Like what are some ways that we can keep ourselves in check when we're engaging in, um, you know, heated discussion or disagreements with our spouses? Okay. Well, the most important thing you can do, like Rhonda was saying earlier, is kind of lay out, we call it a battle plan as well, but lay out your rules. So we call it your rules of engagement. Mm-hmm. So basically, these are the rules that basically you can't go here. Mm-hmm. Because we all know words hurt, words cut. And being, especially in a in a marriage, mm-hmm. you know exactly what word to say to get your spouse or your significant other to that level. Mm-hmm. Like if I say this, I know I'm going to get this reaction. Yeah. And so the main point is, are you trying to win the war? Or are we in this together? Yeah. Because in some cases, people are just trying to win that argument and they're going to say whatever they got to say to say, I got the last word or yeah, don't come for me again. Yeah. But in the end, all you're doing is tearing down the person you say you love the most. Right. So it's really about having those rules of engagement. Yeah. And I would say we can give you a couple of hours and maybe that may help some listeners out there. Um, Is that okay with you, Keisha? Sure. Absolutely. I know one that we have is that, you know, before you get into uh, any type of disagreement at all, that we make it clear, clear that there is going to be an expiration date to our disagreements. Right. And we, we do not allow an argument to go past a certain time point. Now, a lot of times, you know, when you're talking with your mate and we're in heated fellowship, you know, like passions get going. It's like, I want to be heard. You want to be heard. I want to be heard. You want to be heard. We're going back and forth. Right. But there is a moment where you can take a break and walk away from it. But the thing is, don't walk away too long. You know, right. <laughs> like yeah. you got to say, hey, I, I want to. OK, we're going to take a break, but let's talk about this. Let's reconvene about six o'clock p.m. OK, and maybe it's 11 o'clock right now, but it's six o'clock p.m. Or let's reconvene about 20 minutes. Let me take a moment. You know, again, this is so that you do not become a casualty of war. Right. You know, it's it's going back to that. Not making sure any accidents happen, that you don't accidentally hurt someone or offend them. Right. Because like my husband said, you know, like if you're in a ring fight with your mate right you know where their glass jaw is you know where to, where how to hit them where it hurts and so we want to make sure that you don't go past that point that you don't hit below the belt correct so that would be one of those things you know mm-hmm. um, I, I would also say, you know, about the whole, you know, make sure that there is no name calling. You Agreed. know, you cannot call someone out their name. I, and Connell has rules for me. I can't talk about his mama. Don't right. You say <laughs> Gloria. I cannot talk about Gloria. It's going down. Right. It's over. <laughs> we do like that. Uh, I, I can't question his manhood. I cannot curse him and he better not curse me. Correct. You know, we have those as our rules of engagement as well. And also we make sure that we keep it on a peer to peer level. Mm-hmm. because nobody wants to feel like they're talking to their child Ooh, you so you don't want to be talked <laughs> down to like a parent to a child mm-hmm. so we make sure we keep it on that same level but actually let me go back a step uh two before we even start we actually kiss first mm-hmm. because we want that physical intimacy and contact to know like whatever said here is a safe place and know that i'm mm-hmm. not trying to hurt you or bring you down because i still love you yeah. and then we kiss at the end of it just so we know it's resolved and it's not one of those like real quick kisses where no, we go in, somebody y'all. is actually <laughs> oh y'all are kind of sexy i like it <laughs> yeah you know because because you i mean come on we're growing and sexy on here so we know after a good argument you know it's all about the makeup yeah it is it's all about that you so know? you know we kiss at the beginning and the end that way we know like we we, we, we resolve this it's done yeah mm-hmm. it's like our own referee in a sense yeah. you think about that kiss is the referee are we all right ready one two three kiss all right you go <laughs> let's go and then we then afterwards, it's like, give me a kiss. But we make sure that one at the end is more passionate yes. than the one at the beginning. Right. Because you need it. It seals it. It's something about it. It really seals it. Um, and it works for us. It's worked for, you know, the couples we work with. And, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. I don't mind a good fight because I know I'm going to get something good in the end. <laughs> <laughs> That is true. (laughs) I love it. I love these um, pointers. I'm definitely going to, um, you know, use them because sometimes I might talk a little slick. So I got to get that under control. (laughs) (laughs) And and, and you know what we all do. But, you know, again, if you lay out what those rules of engagement are, you say, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're not going to do. It makes it so much easier 
to deal with, you know? Yeah. yeah. So saying, are you dumb is probably not nice, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's not good. <laughs> no, he <laughs> should. <laughs> I don't think that's going to go over well. Okay. All right. I got I to work on some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> We're praying with you, okay? Yes, please. <laughs> All right. So protecting your union. I listened to one of your podcasts about the firewall. I love that podcast. So good. Thank you. (laughs) So a lot of us don't realize that there are people out there that do want to, you know, I don't know, poison your union or get up into your business and try to cause, you know, some type of friction and stuff. And I have seen it myself. I always tell my husband, um, when you go out, um, you know, just be cautious of people because you never know what their agendas are. So just carry yourself accordingly and have a great time, but be aware because the devil is always looking to attack your relationship by any means necessary. Right. Mm -hmm. So you're absolutely right. Yeah. So please share some of the tips that you shared on that podcast um, with this audience. Absolutely. Uh, Well, we always talk about a couple things you want, you know, you there's, I would say about three things that you want to look at when you want to create a strong firewall. One is you want to make sure that you block any attempts at all from family, (laughs) family hackers, because they will be the first ones that can rip or tear down your firewall because you think it's a trusted source. Right. And we're not saying that all family is wrong, but we're saying maybe look at their relationship ahead of time and see where are they at? Are they in love? Are they, do they have a successful union or marriage? Right. Right. Because you know you always want to seek wise counsel. So therefore you want to make sure it's a very impartial family member if that's who you're going to go to. Because in the end, if it's my family, though they're, we're talking about us, they're only going to know me. Mm-hmm. They're, so they're, and eventually they're probably only going to take my side because they love me more. I mean, regardless of the intentions, that's just how it is. Because yeah. even, even as a parent, you're going to take your child's side. You I know? am. All day. I'm telling you right now, I am. <laughs> and, and, you know, and, and it's not, it's just the way that we're built. We're yeah. built to be a unit. We're built to protect that family. Right. Now, sometimes, you know, you have to make sure that you don't put them in opposition with the Lord, right? Correct. So when you're, when you're dealing with family hackers, you know, it says in the Bible very clearly, you know, what God has joined together, let no man tear asunder, right? That means your family, that it means you, you got to make sure you keep them out because if they come against the one thing that God values the most, which is marriage, it's the first relationship ordained and created by God. Okay. If you come against the thing that he loves the most, right, then I'm telling you, you're putting your family member in a position where they're going to fall hard and fast. They're not going to win if it's a war between them and God. God is always going to win. He's the king of kings. So we say don't put them in that position by giving them too much information. Correct. Mm -hmm, Telling them too much, leaning in. You cannot tell them when you guys are having a problem. I'm sorry, it's just not them. You have to choose, like my husband said, wise counsel. Somebody that's unbiased and that's for both of your relationship. They're not choosing sides. They choose both of you. That's who you need that you need to lean into and talk to. Okay? Agree. And at the same time, really evaluate what you're saying. Because certain things that if you know that you're going to be able to get past it, why even mention it to anybody at all? Right. Because everything doesn't need to be talked about. So why tell somebody such and such did such and such when you know you're going to forgive them for that already? But like my wife just said, but that friend or whoever that may be has that ammunition. Well, you already know what he's like because he did such and such last time. Or you already know what she did. So let me remind you of it. Right. You got to watch out for, you know, those type of family hackers. Um, I would also say you need to watch out for (laughs) those negative influences. Like you got to make sure you watch the traffic that's coming into your firewall. Okay. So if you have somebody that, um, they're not in in a good space, I'm talking about a, you know, I don't want to be mean to your single friends, but you know, there are single friends. They just don't have the resources. They don't know. They have not been in a long-term, maybe they've been a long-term relationship, but it's quite very much different from a marriage, right? So they may put you in a situation where your integrity as a married person can be questioned. Right. So what I'm saying is like, you can't go out 
all night with your single friend to the club and things like that and think when you get back your marriage is going to be solid right you're putting yourself in a situation where someone else can say something people lie all the time don't give them the the leeway or even the opening to disrespect or tear down your relationship with something like a false pretense agree and the, Keisha, there's one thing I want your listeners to really re- recognize and, and understand. So the friends you have right now, all of them aren't going to make it with no. you on this journey. No. Some people are going to have to get let go just so you can grow even more. Yeah. So they can't get caught up in the fact, well, he's been my friend since we were 10 and so forth. That really doesn't matter because this person you're marrying, this is your friend for a lifetime going forward. Amen. So everybody can't make this journey with you and you have to be okay with that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have to be okay with that. We always say that, do you want a hostile takeover or do you want a marital merger, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, think about it. When you're doing a merger, some things stay and some things go, you know, but if it's a hostile takeover, then everybody is on there and then you never, it's chaos and nobody knows how you're going to be led and where it's going from there. You don't want that in a marriage. So that's why you have to watch out for those negative, you know, influences and the traffic that comes in, that comes in and out of your door. And then the last thing is you want to make sure that you watch extramarital relationships because they can create a virus that will attack your entire mainframe of your marriage. I mean, we're just going to put it down and clear with that. You you have to watch out for people or having relationships. And relationships aren't always sexual with someone else. You can have emotional connections, right. you know, where someone is downloading into your hard drive on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to watch out for that. Like, you cannot um, allow a connection in there. Actually, what people don't always know is that your mind is your soul. So when people, when, when God especially is asking for the renewing of your mind, he's saying your soul, because so much can go into your mind and it can attack, it, everything starts. If you get hit in the head, the whole body falls. So if someone makes a connection in the head or in the mind with someone else, then that re- their relationship that they're actually joined to will fall. It's, it's just no way. It's no way that you can have more than one person in your marriage bed it's just not going to happen it won't work right Mm -hmm. I agree and that's why I had an episode about um platonic friendships and you know Mm -hmm. what I mean and marriages Mm -hmm. and how you got to really be careful of that because it can get kind of slippery it is slippery slope and and somebody's gonna fall exactly no if you say you're gonna just sit there we're just friends we're just (laughs) we're gonna just sit here naked and we're not gonna do nothing you alive from the pit of hell Mm -hmm. it's just not gonna happen it you you just can't put yourself we always say this do not get in the ring with the devil if you're not ready to fight Mm -hmm. it's his don't do it ding ding you're out exactly (laughs) yes yeah That is great. I love it. All right. So earlier you said when you get married that you really should be getting into this union um, thinking that, look, this is for life. We're not breaking up. If it gets hard, we're going to work it out. But let's be honest. There are some marriages that start off all wrong from Jump Street. People do get into these marriages. And at some point they need to walk away for their own mental health or even maybe their own physical well-being. So what are some signs that maybe it's time to walk away? Or what would you say after you've exhausted this, then you know maybe it's time to walk away? Well, I'm going I'm to start because I know Rhonda is big on this one. Oh, yeah. I'm seriously. <laughs> but first and foremost, um, if they didn't pray about it in the first place and they didn't hear from God saying that this should take place, that this marriage is ordained by God, then they should, they should not have done it in the first place. Mm-hmm. Because really what it comes down to is two easy words. Mm. Are we equally yoked? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Say, mm-hmm. It. Say it. It's so true. Like if you're not equally yoked now, I, I will tell you this. This is our stance. When before you're married, we will do everything in the world to break you up. That is literally a part of our plan when you come into that. We throw every possible thing at couples that come into our premarital courses so we can make sure that they're ready for marriage. Now, when you're married, right, when you're married, we do not speak against marriage. Remember, we don't want to be on in opposition with the Lord. So you have to make sure that if you're taking that marriage on, that you are ready for the whole thing. But we can tell you some red flags to look out prior to marriage. Now, I will say this. 
there are reasons to walk away from marriage. In the Bible, it's not always explicitly said, but it, we can say exactly what it is based upon the living of the other people that were in the Bible at that time and what was happening in that situation. If someone is physically abusing you, um, someone is, and I'm talking about touching you, and, and abuse is not just physical, it is also verbal as well, but if someone is tearing you down in a very narcissistic way and they're not allowing you to shine out of jealousy, out of anger, out of rage, out of other familial background issues, I'm telling you, not only walk away, you better run, okay? Um, if someone is putting you in a situation where you're, they're going to put you in financial ruin due to situations where they have gambling habits, they have addiction issues. Yes, you should run. Now, is that a long run? Yeah, you can put everything you can and exhaust every possibility into it in order to make sure that you did what you could in order to salvage the marriage. Yes, that's good. But if it's going to affect your children, if you have children, if it's going to affect your safety, your right. health, your well-being, run. Do yes. not walk. Run. Now, I would love to tell you some red flags of what you should look out prior to getting uh, getting married, and and then we can see what they grow into because red flags become bigger as you get married. Whenever you marry someone, whatever you thought was super cute, and, and I saw rainbows and unicorns when I was with you at first, and now all of a sudden it changes into something else, it amplifies for the good or the bad, whatever it may be. So one, I would tell you is watch out for how they treat people that they perceive to be small. Okay. So it, it's very simple. Let's say you're going to a restaurant, Keisha, and it's your, your first date with someone, right? And they're at, they're there and the waitress is coming or the waiter is coming over or the bus boy. And they're extremely rude to that person, right? They're like, go get this, go get that, move on this. Get, look at this. They, they should get this amount of money. Don't tip them. They, they need to serve me. Little things like that. The way they treat people that others may perceive small, mm -hmm. I watch big time because that is, they can't hide that. Someone who's an aggressor is going to show it right then and there because it says very clearly in the Bible, the meek shall inherit the earth. They're not, they're not weak. They're just maybe considered in this world not to have everything in the world. So if they treat someone like that and they take that as an opportunity to take dominance over them, to take control over them, I would tell you not only walk, but you better get the hell out of there. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what I can put here. <laughs> All day. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that would be one of the other things. The other person is the, someone who I would consider Mr. or Mrs. Spiritual. Mm -hmm. And these are people that um, they don't really make a choice. Right. And when it comes back to being equally yoked, you say, hey, you're asking that person, so what are your beliefs? How do you believe? Do you believe in the Lord? Do you not believe in the Lord? What, what are your beliefs? And they say to you, oh, I'm spiritual. You know, I believe it's something that's there. You know, I'm just, you know, I'm there. You know, I, that's where I'm at. That person will not choose a side. They're neither hot nor cold. They're a lukewarm person. And if they can't make a choice of what their core beliefs are, their core values are, there is no way that they'll be able to make a decision on you. Okay? It's just that simple. They they will they will end up pulling you away from, you know, where you are, your destiny, rather than drawing you to it. It's easier for someone to bring you down than it is for you to pull them up. Mm. Okay. All right. So those are red flags. And those are things that people should be paying attention to when they're getting into relationships. What about infidelity? When is when do you draw the line on that? Well, how about hell? No, that shouldn't be there. <laughs> <laughs> it, the day it happens, you know, it, it don't happen, to be honest, it happens in your mind first. Because mm -hmm. once the mind goes, the body follows. Yeah. So once you start making these plans in your head, like I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Then you've already set the the stage for what's going to come. Yeah. So really, it from day one, like once infidelity gets involved, because if you think about it, who cheats just once? Yeah. See, my husband is a firm believer in that. I believe that there is redemption. You can forgive someone. Now, my personal threshold, no, it, it just won't happen. That is one of my deal breakers for my husband. Me if too. he were to step out in this marriage, I'm out. Like, there's no mm -hmm. way. And, and it takes a lot because, you know, I love this man. I'm, I'm in love with him. And he is my best friend and I'm a fight for this. But if you allow someone else to get in here, it, it's just, I, I just feel like someone broke our connection. You can't do it. And that's also 
uh, biblical too. You know, if there's if someone shares your marriage bed, if there is you know a form of adultery in your relationship, infidelity, then you know those are grounds for divorce. So those are my grounds as well. But I have seen where someone has made a mistake because there are people that self sabotage. There are self saboteurs in relationships, and because it's getting so good, they get scared because they don't know what's happening. They're waiting for the other shoe to fall off, mm. so they'll take it off themselves. Mm. And we've seen that with a lot of other people where they will where you know they'll make a lapse in judgment both men both women it's not one way or the other and you know it's it's really on the, the onus of the person of the forgiver you know do they can they take it you know it's really their threshold can they accept it and can they really forgive that is the only way no relationship can survive if you don't have forgiveness in your toolkit yeah Agreed. that's true that's my deal breaker too Mm-mm. that's a whole <laughs> hell no for me <laughs> <laughs> so before we move on to my game because i have a little game for you guys <laughs> this. the last thing i want to talk about is just celebrating each other and loving each other and keeping it spicy give us your top three things for you know doing that okay i'll go first <laughs> so one thing that we do because we all know that Sometimes we get caught up in the the day and we tend to let outside influences affect us where when we get home, we just don't talk, we don't communicate and things of that nature. So one thing we do is we have tub time Tuesday mm-hmm. where we'll draw a bath. First, we'll, we'll get the kids ready, we'll, we'll shut them down and we'll draw a bath and we'll literally sit in the tub for hours talking watching a show or just spending that spend, spending that quality time with one another yeah. that we really don't get on a daily basis because we're just so busy. But see anything anything that happens with romance or anything, you have to make things important to you. So you have to be intentional about the time you want to spend with each other. Mm-hmm. So that's why we specifically say Tuesday is our time. Mm-hmm. There isn't a Tuesday where we that's gonna go by that we don't get our bathtub time. Yeah. Tub time Tuesday. I look forward to it. Because it's just before hump week and I'm just excited. <laughs> hump week? Yeah, hump, hump, hump week. day. Hump day. Hump week. <laughs> it just didn't sound right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm fine with it either way with you. So how about that? <laughs> um, <laughs> I would say, I guess number two would be date your mate. You know, yes. like we we make it, we have like little events and my husband and I, you know, every anniversary we switch off and we take turns and we surprise each other on what we're going to do you know, for, you know, our anniversary or for Valentine's Day or something along that day. And most people will call, you know, other holidays, Hallmark holidays, but we take opportunities to celebrate Sweetest Day too, you know, and, you know, I will surprise him and say, hey, we're going to go and get massages and we're going to go get, we're going to have a picnic and, and we just do all type of things that he may want to do, or we'll go see a game or, or anything that we want to do. And we, it's just us and we just completely focus on one another in that time. So I would say date your mate is like super crucial, you know, crucial in, in everything that you do. And then I would say one of the last things we tend to try to do is we, we call it give each other life. Mm-hmm. And I say give each other life because we try to speak into each other's spirit on a daily basis mm-hmm. and let each other know, like, like Rhonda tells me about her day and whether she's down or up, I'm going to tell her, Hey, you got this because mm-hmm. I know what you're capable of. God gave you this gift for a reason. Yeah. And I'm going to make sure she's aware that no matter what's going on around her, I'm going to be her biggest cheerleader regardless of anything. Yeah. yeah. Cause that's how it always should be. Cause I know the world is against her in all that she does. But when she, when it comes to me, I can hold her down. Yeah. And I would say it's the same way. You know, we say, even when we officiate to couples, we, we, I've heard my husband often say this, he'll tell men, you're the initiator of love. But then I will say to the women that we are officiating, your job is to protect him. When he gets home, he needs to feel like this is a vacation. You know, mm-hmm. it was hard in the world. And I, I must say, just because I have two little boys and I have my husband, 
um, you know, my man, right? Mm -hmm. I recognize how hard the world is on men in general. And so they have so much they have to do that so much that that has been, you know, laid upon them from the very beginning, you know, with Adam and Eve, it's like the men are to toil the soil. That's what it's going to be for the rest. They always have sweat on their brow. Mm -hmm. So when they get home, I want to be the first one to wipe it off, right? I want to let them know it's going to be okay. And I'm going to let them know that they can confide in me. They can tell me their deepest, darkest secrets. And we find it that it's a safe place that we can be naked and not ashamed. And when he's speaking life to me, I feel like I've grown some. But when I speak life to him, I feel like I grow more. And I just love strong because that way he can walk out and deal with the world when he knows that I got his back, his side and his front. Right. Mm -hmm. So basically what we're talking about right there, Keisha, is just making sure that you're dealing with your significant other in their love language. Mm -hmm. So like I know Rhonda's is words of affirmation. And it's also making sure I do what I say I'm going to do. Yeah, acts of service all yes. day. <laughs> so you want to make sure you're communicating with your significant other in their love language. Because mine is quality time and physical touch. Mm -hmm. And some people's might be gift giving. And that doesn't mean that they just want something all the time. But a little token of appreciation isn't a bad thing. No, it's not. I mean, your engagement ring, your wedding ring is a, is a, is a strong gift giving. Okay. I mean, like it, it just really depends on the circumstance. But we, we truly believe in dating your mate, making sure you have words of affirmation, and then most importantly, we are never losing our Tell Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That is fabulous. I love all these tips. How long have you guys been married? It's a Forever. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> It's been 11 years, but it'll be 12 years in September. Correct. Wow, congratulations. That's awesome. So now we're going to play the Oh Hell No <laughs> game, right? Okay. So I'm going to ask you a series of questions. I have like six questions. And you're going to say if this is an Oh Hell No or if it's an Oh Hell Yes or an Oh Hell Maybe. Explain the compromise where it you know, could possibly be okay. So, all right. You're is it a mutual answer or is it like mine and hers? Yeah, How it's, it be? I'm sorry. Yeah, you, you guys can have, you can have different, different opinions on it. So you can give me your answer and Rhonda can give me her answer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the first one is your spouse plans a trip with friends and you're not invited. Is this an oh hell no or an oh hell yes? Can I go first? Yeah. yeah. I say oh hell yes. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if, if it's planned then I've already been made aware of what's going on. I've got the itinerary. I know where she's going to be and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be anything that surprises me. And plus, my wife knows I don't keep unsavory people around me. Yeah. So if it's a guy's trip, she actually wants me to go on a guy's trip. I do. So Go somewhere. Go somewhere. <laughs> I'm serious. So I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing at all. Because, you know, you need, that, you need that time together, but you also need that time apart. So when you come back together, it's even that much stronger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry. I agree with him 100%. <laughs> so, oh, hell yes. I, oh, hell yes. I think okay. it's fine. I okay. think it's super fine. I think it's, you, you know, you're not losing self. You're actually gaining self in those situations. So, yeah, go out. Enjoy one another. Enjoy others. Yes. <laughs> All right. Number two, your wife likes to wear sexy clothes and sometimes goes braless, but she's always been like this. Is this an oh hell no or an oh hell yes? <laughs> okay. So let's say oh hell maybe. <laughs> can, can we yes. a little? Yeah. Because no, because truth be told, I actually dress Rhonda and I dress her well. Yes, he does. So mm -hmm. I'm not going to send her out into public any type of way. <laughs> So I'll be like, hey, babe, you, you, you think that's right right there? I mean, does that work for you? How do you feel? You know, because mm -hmm. I, I want the girls to be taken care of and supported, <laughs> you know, so I'm going to I'm going to lead her to putting on that bra. But actually, when you say that, it reminds me of an episode of Seinfeld. Oh, God, no. <laughs> oh, you know? yeah. they, they were just everywhere. Right. <laughs> but um, so I'm, I'm going to say, oh, hell no, because I'm not going to I'm not going to let my self because Rhonda is me and I am her so I'm not gonna let myself go out in public like that and have anybody thinking some type of way about her so no I'll, I'll definitely let her know that she needs to put on a bra I would say mine is oh hell no maybe because some dresses you can't have it in there you know you you know but if I have the right coverage you know I'm not gonna do anything that's gonna jeopardize you know, our, our bond, you know, I'm not going to put him in a situation where he's like, people are like, man, what's going on with your girl? You know, like, I'm not going to have him in that situation, but there are some dresses where you, you cannot wear them, but you, you might need to wear a pasty. So right. I'm going to say that, you know, 
but but as a woman too if you felt like you wanted to dress sexy and your husband was kind of like um that dress is too tight or too whatever do you feel like that's oh hell no honey you need to just accept me this is me or do you feel like there needs to be a compromise or what do you feel about that you know, I would listen to him with my husband. I would listen to him. You know, every relationship is different, but I know he'll never send me out looking like a fool. He, he's not going to have me out there like that. Right. And I also right. do believe like I want to dress sexy, but I want to dress sexy for him. You right. know? And so I do that. I'm not doing it for everybody else. I'm doing it for him. And then, you know, when I when I bring it home, I just feel like that is OK there. But, you know, everybody is not entitled to this. They didn't marry me. He did. That, that's <laughs> actually a really good point, because it's really about what attention are you trying to garner right because if you just if you just want my attention you've got it all day but if we're going out and you want everyone else's it's really a question of why do you need that why do you need everyone else's approval as far as what you have on if i say you look beautiful already yeah so why do you have to take it to another level yeah yeah it's something deeper there yeah Yeah. i like that you said that Rhonda. that you said oh if he like if he likes you know whatever he likes i'm gonna go with that because that's who i'm trying to be sexy for so yeah yeah, that's an excellent (laughs) point guys so um number three you buy your spouse a gift and they want to return it Oh, hell no, or oh, hell yes. <laughs> I'm Keisha, answering this come one. On, why are you no. doing that? Like <laughs> I'm answering this one. Oh, hell no. Okay. Oh, hell no. <laughs> He, he takes back my gifts all the time. I mean, he'll say, "You got the receipt for this." I'm like, "Oh, really?" <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. It does. I'm it sorry. does because I I will be looking around all day, Keisha. I'll be looking for something. I'm like, oh, he's gonna look great in this for Christmas. Oh my goodness! <laughs> can we tell her about that? You can tell her. They're still upstairs. I, I, the good thing you about that, the receipt. I, no, I, you have 365 days to send them back, so I'm not worried. Oh, about it. really? That's so hurtful. It was these shoes. I got him some Cole Haan shoes. I was super proud of these shoes for him, uh-huh. and I was I, I went everywhere. I even had my sister order them so that he wouldn't know because you know we share accounts, and so I was like, I don't want him to see it, right? And so I get him there, I wrap him up when he. When he opened that box on Christmas, he was so underwhelmed. I felt so defeated. I was like, really? I looked everywhere for you, and you're just going to you're gonna do that? He was like, hey, do you got the receipt, though? But this is beautiful. And then try to give me a kiss. I was like, no, no. Look at this. I put a lot of hard work in there. I looked mm. everywhere for these shoes for you. That First is off, so funny. She played herself. She played herself. <laughs> I did. She knows for a fact my <laughs> shoe game has to be on point because she know how I do my babies. <laughs> That's true. So even taking a step further, when she buys the kids clothes, he I does. take them back. He takes them back too. Don't nobody dress my boys but me. No, that's not. I'm sorry. Like, I, I know too. if it's not Jordan or Nike, it's Polo. And if she go buy a shirt from Target, it's got to go back. No, that's not true. <laughs> I'm just saying. Target. Hold on. I'm in love with Target. Yeah, Target has some my- really cute um, clothes for kids. I have to agree, Rhonda. Dude, mm-hmm. They do. Back then, when they were younger, they do. But um, I'm going to say, oh, hell, yes. Because oh. you got to take certain things back. And no. don't, but, don't, but don't get no. me wrong. The stuff I buy her it doesn't go back because she never gets the receipt. <laughs> that's but, true. You are he so will slick. Not, he will not get the receipt. Mm-hmm. But no, I mean, the, it's the what happened to us. The thought that counts. Can't we just live on that statement? Really? Yeah. Then if it's the thoughts that count, you should keep those shoes. No, it's the thought that counts. You you tried, <laughs> but we're gonna fix this. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so no, certain things have to go back to the store. I got stuff upstairs right now. I'm waiting to take back some quarantine. <laughs> once it's over. He is no, so he, bad. Yeah, gonna, this is a whole new episode. We're gonna talk about this at another time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Number four, your spouse does not like someone that you are friends with. Do you get rid of that friend? Is that oh, hell yes or oh, hell no or oh, hell maybe. Oh, hell maybe, you know, it, because it may depend on, on the situation. Like we, we need to know what it's rooted in. Right. Because in some cases, especially like a, a few of the friends I've had in the past, um, Rhonda didn't necessarily ask me to get rid of them right away because if anything, Maybe I was that calming influence on them yeah. that made them want to kind of change their ways. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to just like throw the baby out with the bathwater. Mm-hmm. You really want to like get down and dirty with it and just see what's the underlying problem and see if you can actually help them through it. Yeah. You know, the Bible says lay down your life for a friend. So you should now you're you're 
primary friend is your spouse, right? right? But the external relationships, maybe they just haven't grown with you or matured with you. And so that's okay. You can give them, there can be some growing pains, but if there's someone that is completely against your relationship yeah. or they've crossed boundaries, yeah, they got to go, yeah. you know? So, so that's what we say. Maybe it's, it's on yeah, a case by case basis. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. Number five, spouse, your spouse goes shopping uses your credit card without asking or telling you or in your case using the shared account and doesn't tell you what the money what they spent the money on or what what they used it for or even ran it by you is that an oh hell no or an oh hell yes or an oh hell maybe so actually this is a so we have a survey that we do with our class Mm -hmm. and one of the main questions on there what is a discretionary amount that is okay Mm-hmm. Up to a certain point for your spouse to go ahead and spend without, without discussing it. Mm-hmm. So it is an oh hell, maybe, but it's only to a certain point that we have already discussed. Yeah, because like I'm, I'm not her dad, so if she wants things, I, we we make money to spend money, mm-hmm. and I want her to have what she desires. But that's not to say go and spend five thousand dollars on on a, a purse or some Jimmy Choo's or something. So it's it's within reason. Yeah, I, I would say, I don't. we wouldn't even go that far. It's, I'm not spending that amount of money on shoes. I'm just being real with you. I will find a really good pair of shoes at DSW and make it work. But I will say that, you know, it's about the communication prior. This is when there, you know, there's a lack of communication in there. Now I'm putting on my teacher hat again. You know, when we go talking about discretionary funds, we've already discussed what is our threshold. And so we always say $200. Like, you know, you can tell, you know, but when we were early in our marriage, it was 50, you know, because it was just depending on finances and where we were at the time. And we know that in the joint account, all of our bills, all of our main priorities are listed in there. So you don't take from that account. We can, we do have separate side accounts. And then we, then we also have um, a joint savings account. So we have multiple things, but we discuss things beforehand. Like, Hey, I'm thinking about getting this. I'm thinking about doing this. Right. And then we actually pitch one another. So what we'll say is like, Hey, I'm thinking about spending this. If, if it's a, like a large expense or something along that line, we'll say to one another, like, okay, so this is what I'm thinking about and why I think we should get it at this time. And it's your job to sway them or persuade them to want to get it. And then that way it's a united decision and no one can walk away being upset. Yeah. That us. I love that you guys talked about the discretionary amount that, you know, set, setting that and having that be the base for spending money. That's a great idea. I mean, we always discuss, um, we have joint accounts and then we have separate accounts. So if I, you know, want to spend something extra in the joint account, I always clear it first. Or I'll just say, hey, I spent this amount today. This is what it's for and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, you right. definitely have to communicate. I think it's just respectful because you know, it's both your money and you just want to show that level of respect. Like <clears throat> I respect what you contribute and I'm not just going to spend your money without blah, blah, blah. And same for me, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You're on the right page. Yeah. I think we all are. Yep. Absolutely. So the last question is, I know you guys do premarital counseling, but what are your thoughts on marriage counseling to, you know, um, for a longer period of time or just for tuning up the marriage? Is that an oh, hell no. Oh, hell yes. Or only when you have problems or oh, hell, maybe. What is that for oh, you guys? It's the, oh, hell yes. Come mm-hmm. on now. It's preventative maintenance. Yes. You know? <laughs> like, to be honest, a lot of the couples that are in the class have already been married. And they come back because there's something more they could learn and grow from. Mm-hmm. So we definitely suggest um, continued maintenance, as Rhonda just said, because you never stop learning each other. And you, you're constantly becoming different people each and every day. So that just when you think you got it down and you know... The next day you don't. You don't know this person anymore. And you got to continue to learn them. Mm -hmm. So you have to constantly continue to grow. And that can only happen with additional education. Yeah, yeah. We always talk about we're working on our PhD on each other. Like I'm getting my degree in Connell every year. And I'm going to make sure that I'm going to add more certifications to it so that I know him even better. Um, But we always say like you got to level up. We're 
whenever someone has been, let's say, married for 20 years in our class, we'll say, have you ever been married 30 years? And they'll say, no. Okay, well, cool. We're about to train for those. We're going to pr- prepare for the next 10 years. You've got to level up. And let's just be honest, you know, you know, new level, same devil. You have to be prepared because there's always something that he may throw your way, right. some type of, you know, fork in the road where you may need to make a decision. And we're not ignorant of his devices. So you got to be prepared. So no, yes, all day. Oh, hell yes. You better have some preventative maintenance. (laughs) You better be all on it. (laughs) Yes, I love that. So um, guys, this was such an amazing episode. I had so much fun talking to you guys and learning because I feel like I learned a lot today. And um, I just want to thank you for coming on the show and sharing all of what you're doing and what you know with me and my guests. I mean, my, um, what are these people? Listeners. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like you're trying to say goodbye. I'm not ready yet. I know, right? It was such a great time. So I hope you guys had fun. And please tell everyone where they can listen to your podcast and follow you on social media or your groups, whatever you have going on, we want to know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we are located at Me To We Talk Podcast, and you can find us on any of your podcast directories. And you can go to our website at me to we talk.com And that is for if you want to just have tough conversations about relationships. And we always promise to tell you the truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. So, so help, help me God. God. We promise you that all the time. And then we also have for those who are getting ready to be married or looking for postmarital, you know, help we have our me to we love website and that's you know www.metowelove go to me to we love.com and go to our prep for marriage page and you can find new courses new information and we are going to be doing those live on zoom as well you know during this crisis so there are multiple resources in order to help your relationship grow and we want marriage to survive we love love and we want you to love it too Absolutely. I think I'm definitely going to have to sign up for one of these classes, me and my husband. <laughs> I think it would be so much fun. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And follow us on Instagram, too. You know, there's so much. We always are putting out like uh, words for the day or what we call me to we motivationals, you know, so to keep you going. So, yeah, please follow us at me to we love on Instagram and Facebook. Yes, people. And I'll be putting all this information in the show notes just in case you don't listen very well. (laughs) No, I'm just kidding. It'll be in the show notes. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) 